Hello! Welcome to Witchcraft. So it's January and I've recently announced that I'm doing monthly themes. This month is going to be familiars and I wanted to start off this month with doing something that kind of memorializes our previous familiars in a really fun and kind of cute way. So I decided to go with kind of like a a wall mount, I guess you could call it, um, but it's completely cruelty free, no animals were harmed, and it looks just like my little baby boys that I had and they're so cute. I'm so happy with how this came out, so without further ado, let's get started. I started this sculpture by building the shape of the head and ears with aluminum foil. This allows the final sculpture to be very light and a lot easier to attach to the wood plaques. Then I added air dry modeling clay in thin pieces to cover the entire piece except for the back. You want to leave the back exposed as much as possible, but make sure you cover all of the edges leading up to it. Here I'm using flat glass marbles to create the eyes. I had an albino bunny with reddish blue eyes, so that's why I'm using red marbles. Make sure you line them up as close as possible before you push them into the clay and add the eyelids, because it will be very obvious if one marble is off and it's not gonna look right. I finished building up the shape of the head and ears until I was satisfied that it looked as close as possible to a real rabbit. And then I used some fine point ceramic tools to create the nostrils and the mouth. I decided I wanted to create a piece for each of my previous rabbits, so I made another head, but I used 
clearish white marbles since my other rabbit had brown eyes. While I was waiting for the clay to dry, I sanded down these pre-made wood plaques that I got from the art store. Um, and then I painted them kind of like a shimmery light brown color, let that paint dry. And then I painted a second coat to cover any little light spots or areas that I might have missed in the first round. For the rabbit with brown eyes, I used dark brown acrylic paint for the color of the iris. And then I added some lighter brown to add in some highlights and some depth into the eye. For the albino rabbit with the reddish blue eyes, I did the same technique, but I used a dark blue as a base for the iris, and then I highlighted it with some lighter blue. Then once that blue was dry, I went over it with a really thin coat of silver acrylic paint to kind of make it look iridescent, since that's how his eyes looked in real life. Next, I painted the nostrils and inside the mouth with a pinkish red color. I also used this color for what's gonna be the inside of the ears before I decided that it was too light and I wanted to make it darker. Painted on some pupils. Once the pink paint dried on the ears, I decided it was way too intense of a color, so I painted white over it and then wiped it off. And I did this probably five or six times until it was light enough, but still looked like pink flesh inside of a bunny ear. While I had the white paint out, I added a few little dots onto the eyes to make it look like a reflection. Once the paint on the eyes dried, I used clear nail polish to coat the eyes and make them nice and shiny. And I also did this to the nostrils and the mouths and it just added a little bit more life to the sculptures. And now for the faux fur. Using E6000 glue and a paintbrush, I coated the entire top of the head before placing the faux fur on it. And I used a really sharp pair of scissors to cut the fabric to the exact right shape so it would fit just right. For the fur, it's really important that the hair is going in the right direction so it looks natural. The fur should flow from the tip of the nose back towards the neck or where the body of this rabbit would be, and you should do that on the entire face. I found it really helpful to have a couple of combs to part the fur and comb the fur away from where I wanted to cut the fabric. The fur on the ear 
ears needs to flow upwards towards the top of the ear. So I used a larger piece of fabric and just wrapped it around the ear after I covered the whole backside in E6000 glue. I also found it really helpful to keep a rag nearby to wipe all of the fur that keeps inevitably getting stuck to the paintbrush with the glue on it. And that way you don't end up with these weird clumps in your glue and it just ends up being a lot easier to apply the glue that way. To trim the fur, start trimming it longer than necessary because you don't want to cut it too short and have bald spots and have to start over. So cut most of the fur off and keep the longer scraps for now because they're gonna come in handy later. Then using the scissors sideways, you can kind of shave and get the fur cut down nice and evenly. There's some blank spots and bald spots and um, some seams that are visible and they need a little TLC. So using the scrap bits that got cut off earlier, um, I used those to fill in the gaps and cover the seams. Once the second round of fur was glued on and then the glue dried, I trimmed that fur down to match the fur around it. And then this ended up hiding all of the seams and all of the blank spots really, really well. I decided I wanted to mount these onto the wooden plaques a little higher than the center so that way I would have room underneath for nameplates. So I lined the head up exactly where I wanted it and then I drew a pencil line just underneath the edge. Then I kind of eyeballed the center and marked it with a nice big X. To display these on the wall, I created a simple wire hang. I drew a straight line across the top of the back of the wood, and then I marked one inch in from each of the edges. Then I hammered in two small nails, maybe about an inch long, with a nice flat head on them. And I hammered those in right on those one inch markings, but I didn't hammer them in all the way. 
Then I wrapped floral wire around each nail about five or six times before trimming the excess wire and hammering the nails in the rest of the way. I put a good amount of glue on each of the nails to secure them even further and then I let it dry. Attaching the heads to the front was actually really simple. I used two inch long nails and hammered them in right on those X's that I made earlier. And I hammered them in maybe about a third of the way. Then I lined up the bunny heads with the pencil marks that I made on there and then pushed the heads all the way onto the nails. took the heads off, erased the pencil lines, and then put a lot of glue on the nail and the wood around the nail. Line up the hole in the foil with the nail and then press it into place and you're good to go. I decided these handsome guys needed a little collar to fancy them up a bit more, so I trimmed my little ribbon to a point. That way it looks like it's actually wrapped around the neck and not just stuck on the front. I pressed the collar into place using a ceramic tool and then I used um, fine point tweezers to get all the little bits of hot glue off of the wood. For the name plates, I wanted them to look like a gold ribbon like you would see on a trophy or something. So I rolled out white polymer clay and then cut my ribbon piece out using an X-Acto knife. Once I had my clay ribbon, I folded it over onto itself and cleaned up the edges. Mm -hmm. 
For the second ribbon, I went with a more kind of rounded arc shape to keep things interesting. After the clay was baked and cooled off, I painted it with gold acrylic paint and it looked so awful that I decided to go over it with gold enamel paint and that ended up looking so much better. Here's how I clean my brushes. I have a metal spring inside of a glass jar filled with turpentine and this will get any type of paint off of your brushes as well as glue, resin, epoxy, pretty much anything. And then I let it sit overnight and the brushes are good as new the next day. I painted my bunnies names onto the gold ribbons with black acrylic paint. A helpful tip, when you have a word that is an odd number of letters and you want it centered, paint the letter that's in the middle of the word first and then fill in the rest of the word around it and it will always be centered. I use this technique all the time and it never fails. I used E6000 glue to attach the ribbons to the wood and then lined them up right where I wanted them before I stuck them on. I decided this still wasn't enough, so I painted a thin black line on the plaques just along one of the ridges to kind of frame out the piece, and then I decided I was done. Thank you so much for tuning in for this episode and thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. Without your support, these videos wouldn't be the quality that they are and the projects that I choose to do would not be nearly as good as they are. So thank you so much for those of you who choose to support me on here. I can't wait to show you my next project. You're gonna love it, whether you like animals or not. So until then, stay healthy, stay safe, Stay witchy, and I'll see you soon.